In this scenario, I want to tell you about a young woman I work, once worked with. She was 18 years old and had been born with a cleft palate and lip. And she'd been bullied so badly as a child in school, this had a huge um, impact on her psychological well-being. During our conversation together, she asked me how boys put condoms on. She said that up until that point she was a virgin, but hoping to get a boyfriend and at some point would want sex. And she said, but supposing she met a boy who didn't know how to use a condom properly, should she know instead, so at least that she can take part in uh, the condom application? So following the good guides of condom applications, I showed her how a boy would put a condom on. But then with really sad looking eyes and face, she looked back at me and she said, Dave, I don't even know why I've asked you that question because with a face like mine, nobody ever wants to shag me anyway. Monica's real downer on herself showed how she was depreciating herself and especially in regards to her sexuality and sexual health. She constructed all of this around notions of what she saw as physical beauty and she compared herself against all those that she th thought were beautiful and she deemed herself being rather ugly. It's important for us to notice here the impact of stigma. That word stigma literally means a mark or a sign. So Monica had a physical mark on her face that she thought that everyone would see and because of that she deemed herself ugly. Um, if you're interested in stigma theory, it's well worth reading up more around this, especially the way in which visible signs can have an impact on how people feel. For Monica, she felt totally unloved and unlovable, and that really taps into this toxic trio that you'll see on the next slide. The toxic trio in relation to low self-esteem and the impact it can have on a person's sexual health and well-being starts off with looking down on themselves. On the one hand, they just don't give a damn about themselves. They don't care what happens. Secondly, they're craving for love and attention. And thirdly, they would be frightened that if they did look out for love and attention, that they might be rejected. This is just one story, and I'm sure that each and every one of you can come up with so many others from clients and patients that you've cared for. So maybe spend a few moments and think about some of your clients who may have low self-esteem, consider that um, toxic trio and the impact it can have on them, and ask yourselves, are these individuals going down a slippery slope of moving towards a lack of love for themselves? It's really important for you to spend a few moments and think about that toxic trio, the not giving a damn about the self, desperate for love and attention, and then being frightened of being rejected, and see how that may impact on so many clients that you actually work with. Because the important thing is, is identifying ways to try to turn these around so that they can end up loving themselves and loving others. Finally, as part of this scenario and exercise, you might want to just draw up a list of some of the characteristics that you consider may lead to this poor self-image and explore them in depth, especially some of the potential outcomes and the impacts on sexual health and sexual behaviours of your clients.